So less than 24 hours ago, the upper hierarchy of the JC of Jamaica Constable Force had some sorts of news briefing and they were updating the nation about two cases in which Jamaicans in most part have some sorts of vested interest in. The first case that they address is the case involving young Gabriel King that lost his life maybe about two years ago in Montego Bay where it is said that the vehicle that his mother Amai Issa was driving was abducted. That boy was found with his throat pretty much bust. Needless to say, unfortunately, there was all sorts of controversy and drama as it pertains to that case. Because persons were wondering, persons were pondering, how is it that a mother that's supposed to have her son's best interests at heart refused to aid in the investigation, refused to give the poor poor access to the phone so therefore they could see if there's anything incriminating or not incriminating against the mother, anything that could aid in the investigation. The next case, as it pertains to dancehall artist medic that lost her life in a very brutal way. Pretty much persons were saying that she was mixed up with some mixed up people. That person that happened to be her boyfriend that was also incarcerated might have put out some sorts of hit on her. So pretty much some people were saying that she basically got what she deserves. And people I do not agree because a life is still alive. Even though you have some young girls that are out there because of monetary gain, because of promotion, they are mixing with the wrong people. And then that always ends up in a very bad predicament, such is the case in her case. So people, I want you to take a listen exactly what the Deputy Commissioner of Popo, Fitz Bailey, and also the present Commissioner of Popo, Doc, has to say, and then I'll give my piece. I think it's Medi. Oh, yes, I think that's what she was saying, yes. In terms of the investigation regarding Gabriel King, as you might be aware, the phone was um, processed based on the directive of the, the, the court, or the order of the court. Unfortunately, there was no evidential value found on the phone. We have our own views, but I will not um, impart that at this time. Right, so a follow-up to Shalom's question. Since there was no evidential value found, as Lizzie P. Bailey said, um, in Gabriel King's mother's phone, what's the next step in terms of the investigations? Unfortunately, we can't disclose that. I mean, the investigation continues. We have not closed the investigation, but we can't. It will be self-defeating for us to say what's the next step. Um, in terms of the case involving medics, it's an active investigation. Um, we have identified persons of interest, and the matter is progressing well and we are convinced based on where we are at, um, we will bring this matter to a positive conclusion. The investigators are there working very hard, and as you might be aware that the remains that were found in St. Catherine, the autopsy and the, and the DNA actually confirm that it's the, the remains of, of medic but it's actively being pursued. We seem to have a very timid cohort of journalists here today. Now, people, like I said, most Jamaicans had a vested interest in both cases for different reasons. As it pertains to Gabriel King, the fact that his mother was not very cooperative with the popo. And most persons would say a mother's instinct would drive her to do everything that is in the best interest of that child. So when we're hearing now that there is no sorts of evidence that is incriminating against the mother on that phone, the only thing that we could say is surprise, surprise, as if we did not know. Because here are the facts. If she had the phone for a couple of hours after the incident, after her son lost his life, she would have had ample time to delete whatever was incriminating against her. And even if the popo had the phone physically and did not have the password, there is technology, there are purses out there. Meaning that you can use one device and access a next device and delete. 
delete and then delete forever. So therefore, she was given more than ample time. Not saying that she did, but me just a say. So when you hear the poor poet telling us that now, this is exactly what most persons would have expected because we know that whenever there's any sorts of high profile case involving anybody with any sorts of money, it seems as if there's a double standard in a justice. Because had this been a poor mother or father, they would have taken the phone, probably B-E-A-T-E-N, this person, to a pulp. There would not be any sorts of court order that was disobeyed. And even from the first one was disobeyed by some sorts of poor person, that person would have been taken in on some sorts of warrant that was issued by a judge. However, we see that it is different. So now we hear the Deputy Commissioner of Paul Paul Fitzbailey is saying, even though they did not find any sorts of evidence, there are some sorts of controversy. Well, duh, you should have known what could have happened, what could have been the possibility. So therefore, you have nobody else to blame but yourself and the investigators that were not firm in getting this phone, getting this passcode in an ample or quick time. Because like them said in an investigation, after 48 hours, the case against the suspect is significantly diminished. And when we talk about double standard, don't you realize in the case as it pertains to Gabriel King and the Issas, they are reluctant to give out any sorts of information. There's always some sorts of privacy issue. However, as it pertains to medic, he is or they are telling you that there is a person of interest. The case is at an advanced stage, so therefore it is an active investigation. However, they could tell you that they have positively identified the suspect, the body was found and investigation should be concluded very soon, positively. So when you hear the commissioner of Popo, Dr. Blake, saying that it seems as if the media is timid. Well, they have a reason to be timid because if you talk and ask certain question, this is not really a democratic country, meaning Jamaica. Yes, it is supposed to be. However, we know that if you do certain thing, you could end up dead. You could end up blacklisted. So people, may just assure you, the tragic state of affair in a Jamaica. And these two cases are perfect example of the double standard that exists. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news is an update about a story that I spoke about yesterday about a 45-year-old laborer. His name is Mr. Omar Menz. He works in a St. Thomas at one of those check construction sites. So pretty much based on the information, it is said that he was cleaning some sorts of hardened cement on some sorts of premix truck. That is those trucks that mix the, con mix the um, cement for construction companies. However, it seems as if the proper protocols as it pertains to cleaning that truck were not followed. Some sorts of incompetence, some sorts of irresponsibility took place. And this man actually lost his life. When I spoke about this story yesterday, I said, had this been any place except for Jamaica, especially in America, this man's family would be taken care of financially for the rest of their natural life. However, when it comes to Jamaica, we see that even if you are supposed to get any sorts of justice or financial compensation, it is going to take forever and a day. Maybe the rest of the living family could have lost their life from natural causes. Because they are going to get some sorts of big lawyer. They are going to pay off the investigators, the popo specifically. And this man's family probably won't get any sorts of compensation. In most of the cases, when people lose their life, they are the major or the main or the only breadwinner in the family. So therefore, whenever they lose their life, the family is going to be in, um, affected financially. They will have to suffer. I also mentioned that the fact that this man lost his life while he was cleaning the truck, it tells me that some sort of protocol was not followed. So therefore, he lost his life because of negligence. I want you to take a listen, take a look to a voice note that has been circling all over social media with his co-workers, our friends, our persons that are privy to the information has to say. And then I'm going to give my piece. Here, yeah, well, no, son. You see, from where you? From where you? The train and drive a truck there. And the concrete hard up in it. So them park it one side pan the side and around three weeks now the man will clean it. So you are going, it's like the man clean a section of it 
and the concrete in Isaac. So, so the man crawl out, they have an hole the right on the side of so the man come to it. So it's like when he push himself he head to it to the to the in foot in foot to the hole. And like in body weight, turn the the the, 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 the chuck itself. So the so the rest of concrete in that chuck just spin so. And like one youth in that when he he went in, you know. Yeah, at next youth in night, at two of them in night, and next youth have to come out to the true part but then pull the concrete. Yeah. Yeah man. I saw it happen. Now people, like I've always said, Jamaica is the epicenter of negligence and irresponsible people. It seems a lot of persons are not focused when they have serious jobs in which people can actually lose their life. It seems as if persons are distracted on the job, them either they pass social media or them have PUM, PUM problem, matey or wifey are stressed them out. So therefore when they go on their job, they are not a hundred percent focused. So therefore they are going to make all sorts of mistakes and these mistakes are going to cause persons to lose their life. So like I said before, there should be protocols that are followed as it pertains to taking off hardened concrete from the mixer. That mixer that turns should not be able to turn whether it is manually or automatically. There's supposed to be some sorts of switch, some sorts of stuff that turn that from happening. You cannot live life by chances and take chance and talk about if we did know. You cannot be guessing and spelling when it comes to dangerous jobs in which people can get hurt, people can lose their life. So therefore, do what you're supposed to do. Take the time. People are always in a some sorts of haste. And like them say, haste makes waste. And in this case, we saw that it lost life. And when it comes to Jamaica, there has been too many instances in which we see people lose their life on a regular basis that could have easily been prevented all because of negligence all because of incompetence all because of irresponsibility all because persons are not focused on exactly what they are supposed to do they are distracted or either stressed out that is no sorts of excuses point blank and period so the next thing that is popping in the news is based on a video that I got with somebody showing his experience of going in some sorts of bank in a Jamaica. Now people, I don't know if you realize whenever you're going to go to the bank, go to customs or go to the tax office, it is a dreaded experience. It is something that you hope or wish you did not have to do, but just that you had to or have to. So take a listen, take a look at this video that pretty much explains the general mode or consensus that most Jamaican experience in any bank in a Jamaica and then I'll give my piece. Me, me tell you this. You see, this is a place that we name bank in a Jamaica. If you know so you have sickness to do for the rest of the day, don't go to that place here. Yeah. You have to go to that place here yeah, if you know say I just bank alone you yeah, go. Because nobody feel like you're going to walk in at a place that you do a business and walk out back. It can't happen. So if you know, say you have a kitty where you're going to link as a man and say you're going to bank first and then go link her after that, that now going to happen. Because you're not going to let yourself until the day done. And if there's a woman and say, yeah, man, baby, I'm going to link up and, 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 and just go to bank first and then link her later. That now going to happen. Because once you're forward in a decent place, yeah, you don't know, have nowhere to go, but in a this place where you go stay. And no matter what time you go yourself, you need a bank in a Jamaica, and the whole day you go spend. No matter if you go at 9 o'clock when it just open, yes, you just open. So people, like I said, these are the dreaded experience that persons in Jamaica experience. When they go to the bank, to the tax office, to customs, most government business. It is as if they are trying to sabotage the business. It is as if they are rebelling. When you go there, customer service is probably the worst. And even if the customer service is good, even if you get a pleasant customer service representative, the experience that you have to go through before you get in while you are conducting your business. First of all, when you go, the line is long, especially on the month end. 
you have to stand up outside in a some sort of sun. You then get a number, then you sit down as if you're in some sort of government cheese line as in America or any other place in the world. So therefore, you feel as if you are begging something. You don't feel as if you are contributing to the profit margin and the richness of this company because they make you feel as if they are doing you some sort of favor and you're on some sort of begging spree. Even with the advancement of technology, it seems as if when you're going there, the computer moves slow, the computer buffer or the worker them a buffer because it seems as if they're mad at the job and they are even worse mad at you. When you go to the banks, you have a whole bunch of customers, a whole bunch of teller line or compartment. However, if there's 20 teller line or compartment, there's only two or three teller, sometimes only one. So therefore, it is as if you don't have anything else to do with your life. Whenever you decide to go to any of these places, the bank, customs, tax office, you pretty much can't clear the rest of your schedule because more than likely, even after you get through, you cannot do anything else. Everything else lock up. So therefore, it's a whole day of fear. And people, that has been my experience. And I am sure that if you tell the truth, that is also going to be your experience. And the saddest part about the whole thing is that it is not as if these banks, NCB and Scotia and banks like those are not making a whole bunch of profits. As a matter of fact, most of those banks are making more money than the banks in the United States based on the profit that they are making annually or throughout the months. So therefore, they can afford to hire more persons, but people like me say, at the end of the day, the bottom line is profit, 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 and F-U-C-K, the customers. And that's the way you're going to feel whenever you do business at any one of these government or private facility, financial institution, that is, such as the banks. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it is called Until D-E-A-T-H Do We Part. I am speaking about persons, youths out there that get involved in any sorts of gang activity. It is the hardest thing for them to do. It is like being in some sorts of obsessive, jealous relationship. Once you decide to leave, even if you have reason, even if people are trying to take away your life, you're going to be looked at as some sort of switcheroo. Such is the case in a youth that lost his life the other day. His name is Roshane. He is from Cockburn, Penn. We are speaking about near three miles. There's a video circulating all over social media with some sort of incident in which a man was laying on the floor of some sort of wholesale at MacLeish's Plaza that is at the intersection of Campbell's and Walton Park Avenue. The video that was circulating said that he went to rob some sorts of Chinese wholesale. However, there was some sorts of licensed firearm holder, a sharpshooter, and he lost his life. His other friend took away himself. Well, people, based on information that I am getting from the street, I am hearing that that is not so. Based on the information that I am getting, this man is from Cockburn, Penn. He used to spar with the people um, down in Waltham, speaking about 77 Lane and Content Avenue. However, them say him not link them anymore, him kind of switch. So therefore, they told him, listen, don't come back over your up because you are now considered as some sort of traitor. Well, here's the thing. He is from Cockburn, Penn. His father, who is allegedly to be some sort of done from there, he left and he is now presently living in the United States. So therefore, he left the son, Russian, the wholesale. So therefore, Russian used to go to this wholesale in a Walton Park and buy. But I told you, they tell him, don't come back. However, it seems as if he thought that his friends are friends turned enemy. His switcheroo friends would not take him away. However, he would learn the hard way. Based on the information, it is said that he went to the wholesale in Walton Park to stock up his wholesale in Cockburn Pen. While he was there, it seems as if some sorts of birdie, some sorts of intelligence, spot a lion, spot him out and say, they don't know, so the youth rush in the over yasso. 
it is said that two persons from those places that I told you, 77 Lane and Content Avenue, went by and was blazing him up. It is said that a license firearm holder was actually there. However, it was not the license firearm holder that blazed up Russian. The license firearm holder, it is said, based on the street, hit up one of the two persons that came for Russian. However, them take for themselves. Are they at the hospital? Did one of them actually D.I.E.? People, I have no sorts of evidence to substantiate those claims. So yes, a license firearm holder was there. However, there was no sorts of robbery. It was somebody that was told never to come back because he violated by switching. So because he switched side, they decided to switch him from life to the afterlife. And that is a story that is on the street. Point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.